everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video, I introduced you to the concept of molar solubility. In addition, we learned about how trying to dissolve a relatively insoluble solid in a solution that has its common ion decreases its solubility furthermore. So in this video, I wanted to illustrate that pH has a, an effect on solubility too. So let's look at this example here where we have magnesium hydroxide, which is pretty insoluble, but does dissolve to small an extent to magnesium cations and the hydroxide anions. Now let's consider what happens if we increase the hydronium ion concentration? Essentially what happens if we make the solution more acidic? Well, think about what else is occurring at the same time, and that is the auto-ionization of water, where like hydronium ions find the hydroxide ions and they form water. So going forwards and backwards here, right? <clears throat> we definitely know that the KW, like going back this way, if you are um, working at 25 degrees Celsius, it's about one times 10 to the negative 14. So basically, once these two find each other, they like to form some water if we go the other direction. So if we increase the hydronium ion concentration, then that means that they will find the hydroxide ions in solution and decrease the concentration of the hydroxide ions in order to form water. So our concentration of hydroxide decreases. And if we look at the equilibrium that's happening at the same time, if we decrease the concentration of hydroxide, how does that shift the equilibrium for the magnesium hydroxide? It shifts it to the right, right? So based on Le Chalier's principle, we decrease the products, the e reaction or the equilibrium will respond in order to restore equilibrium so it's shifting back towards the right and the solubility increases Because if your equilibrium is shifting to the right, then that means you're making more of these ions in solution. So what we can say is that magnesium hydroxide is more soluble in an acidic solution where the hydronium ions are increased. What happens then if we were to decrease the hydronium ion concentration? If we decrease the hydronium ion concentration, and if you think back about the KW, for water, <clears throat> then that means that the hydroxide ion has to increase, right? If this decreases and that concentration of hydroxide ions have to increase. And you can also think back to this equation here where like if this is decreasing, then there's more free hydroxides um, hanging around. So we can say that the concentration of the hydroxide increases. So therefore, if that's the case, if it increases, how does the equilibrium shift for the magnesium hydroxide? Correct, it shifts back to the left. So the equilibrium shifts to the left. And the solubility decreases. Now let's see that in an example where we can quantify some of this data, have a better understanding of that theory. So let's calculate the molar solubility of iron 3 hydroxide. We're gonna do it in water 
We're also going to do it in a solution buffered at pH 5 as well as a solution buffered at 11. So you can see we're going to do it neutral. And at neutral, pH is equal to 7. And we'll assume that. And therefore, the pOH is equal to 14 minus the pH. So this is also 7. And remember, if you wanted to figure out the hydroxide ion concentration, it's equal to 10 to the negative pOH. So in this case here, it is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. So therefore, let's go ahead and write down the equation for iron 3 hydroxide. It's not going to be very soluble in water, so that's why we're doing a rice table here. It's in equilibria. And then our initial concentrations here, <clears throat> we have zero amount of iron in solution. And normally I always tell you like, oh, you know, the ionization of water um, doesn't really affect the hydroxide or hydronium concentration. But in these cases, when it comes to solubility, you definitely want to include whatever solution um, you're working with. Um, in this case, it's neutral, right? So the initial concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th of the hydroxide anions in solution. And it is a very small amount, right? But it affects the solubility um, and gives us a good illustration of how iron 3 hydroxide is soluble in, you know, how soluble it is in pure water versus acidic and basic solutions. So for solubility equilibria, where you do see um, a common ion of hydroxide, then you want to include that concentration of hydroxide from the solution that you are dissolving your uh, solid in. So in this case, initial concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. Never include solids into your rice table or equilibrium constants. Um, the iron increases by plus 1x and the hydroxides plus 3x. So once again, always be mindful that, especially with solubility equilibria, not everything is one-to-one -one mole ratio. Don't forget the stoichiometric coefficients. And then zero plus one X is X. And then we have one times 10 to the negative seventh plus three X. <clears throat> so we wanna use the KSP expression because remember when we're calculating molar solubility, essentially we just wanna figure out what X is. So products over reactants, but we're not including the reactant here because it's a solid to the third power. Once again, that stoichiometric coefficient. Don't forget that. <laughs> It'll mess up your math if you do. This is equal to x times 1 times 10 to the negative 7th plus 3x cubed. <clears throat> and the KSP, you would have to look that up in an appendix in your textbook or literature. Um, and or on the assessment, I'd provide this for you. So it's four times 10 to the negative 38. So definitely not very soluble at all. <laughs> um, so because of that, it's such a small KSP value. X won't change all that much. You will not be making much of the products. So X is definitely safe enough to ignore here, the plus three X. So when I solve for this, I found that X is equal to four times 10 to the negative 17. So basically, if I were to make a solution um, greater than this concentration of iron 3 hydroxide in pure water, then I would definitely see a precipitate form. It would crash out of solution. All right, let's see how working with an acidic solution affects the solubility of iron 3 hydroxide. So now our solution is buffered at pH of 5. Therefore, that's a pOH if we take 14 minus 5 of 9. And a hydroxide, if we do like 10 to the negative 9, hydroxide concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 9, right? <clears throat> 
go through the same procedure of doing your rice table, writing down the equation. Do not include the solids. We initially do not have any iron three plus in solution. However, we do have one times 10 to the negative ninth molar concentration of hydroxide ions in solution from our buffer. And then iron changes by plus one X, plus three X for the hydroxide, we have X, and then one times 10 to the negative ninth plus three X here. <clears throat> Set that equal to the KSP expression. It's going to be x times 1 times 10 to the negative 9th plus 3x cubed is equal to 4 times 10 to the negative 38. x is small enough to ignore, so you get 4 times 10 to the negative 11th molar. So for what we can see so far, we're able to make a 4 times 10 to the negative 11th molar solution and dissolve enough iron 3 hydroxide at that concentration. Anything greater than that, we'll see it precipitate out. In this case here, when we were in pure water, it was much more dilute. So we can already see that based on the molar solubilities, that iron 3 hydroxide is more soluble in an acidic solution than it is in pure water because the molar solubility is greater. Let's see what happens when we work in a basic solution where pH is 11. So therefore the pOH is equal to 3.0 and the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to one times 10 to the negative third Follow the same procedure Zero amount of iron in solution initially, but in this particular buffer, one times 10 to the negative third molar of hydroxide ions initially, plus one X, plus three X, X, one times 10 to the negative third plus three X. We set that up to the KSP expression. So it'll be products of a reactants no reactants in this case because it's a solid. We can assume X is small enough to ignore here. So we get X is equal to 4 times 10 to the negative 29th molar. In this basic solution that's buffered at 11, pH of 11. So we can see that if we had to rank these, an acidic solution, it is most soluble, followed by water, right? Four times 10 to the negative 17th. And then it's definitely not very soluble in the basic solution, the basic buffer. So let's write down our conclusions. Which solution is iron three hydroxide most soluble in? Well, iron three hydroxide is most soluble in acidic solution. If we think about, once again, the hydronium ions, kind of like the equilibria, the water equilibria here. <clears throat> As we increase the, and I'll write down this one too as well, so that you understand that these are both going on 
in your beaker at the same time. So basically as we increase um, the concentration of hydronium ions in solution, they react with the hydroxide, so therefore the amount of hydroxide ions in solution are decreasing, and therefore we're shifting the equilibria to the right and increasing that solubility. Whereas you can see here that if we are increasing the concentration of hydroxide ions, as we're doing here, we're increasing the concentration, then that would shift the equilibrium back to the left, and that's why iron-3 hydroxide is considerably more insoluble in a basic solution where you have more of these common ions due to the fact that it's shifting the equilibrium away from itself and forming more of that insoluble solid. And so you can think of pH um, if you're working with these insoluble hydroxides, um, salts, that you can think of pH like the common ion effect, um, especially because we know that changing the pH changes the hydroxide ion concentration. You can think of the hydroxide as just another common ion. All right. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.